So anyways, yeah, back, back to our podcast here. But that is one of the discoveries that has recently been made. Okay. Now, um, let's now move and discuss plate tectonics in global climate. Where the land masses are has changed over time. Because we learned that in our plate tectonics units, that, that North America wasn't always necessarily in the northern hemisphere. It could have been on the equator. And so that causes, um, obviously, climate to change. So when we look at an old climate, we also need to take into consideration plate tectonics because, you know, uh, Antarctica wasn't always on the bottom of the world. It was further north. And so you can find, um, you know, living things have survived there today that they can't, or et cetera. Um, so thus, the climate has changed as well. Okay. Uh, also, mountains have formed and eroded. And so um, when, when, they, when they had Pangea, I'm gonna, just going to draw a big blob here. And let's pretend this is Pangea. I'd probably have, you know, at one point in Pangea, apparently there was this huge mountain range in the middle of Pangea. And guess what happened here is that, um, and the, I think the wind in Pangea, for the most part, was blowing in, uh, off this direction. And that made this section of Pangea very wet. And this, on this side, it was a desert. Uh, because um, all of the wind, and we talked about this previously in previous podcasts, all of the moisture gets trapped by this huge mountain range, and all the moisture stays on this side. Probably makes this really, really green. I should make it green, shouldn't I? Makes this a really a green climate right here. And this over here on the other side is going to be a very yellow desert because it's going to not get any moisture. So climate is affected by the plate tectonics um, as we look at that. All right? Um, other things that are related to plate tectonics are volcanoes. We had a chapter on volcanoes. Well, um, volcanoes can either um, cool down the earth or heat it up. All right, so if you're a volcano that produces a lot of ash, like this picture right here, this ash, the sun, uh, shines down here, and then it reflects back. Well, when it reflects back, um, it doesn't make it to the earth. Therefore, the reflection will cause the earth to cool. So you get ash in the sky. The sun reflects back. It will cool the earth. Makes sense. The other issue, though, with volcanoes is they can produce what are called greenhouse gases. So some of these gases are going to heat up the earth, and they'll warm the earth up. So which is it? Does it cool it down or heat it up? Well, it sort of depends on the volcano. Some vol the more ash there is, the more it cools it down. And the more gases there are, um, greenhouse gases in particular, the more it warms it up. So it's probably a wash, but there's been instances. In fact, let's talk about one of those instances. The instance is Krakatoa. Krakatoa erupted in 1883. Um, it had a volcanic explosivity index, remember we talked about that, of six. Remember, they can get much higher that for super volcanoes, but this is the biggest one in really recent history. Um, it erupted with 200 megatons of TNT. That's a lot, guys, which is 13,000 times the nuclear yield of uh, the bomb that was dropped on either Hiroshima or Nagasaki, which is called Little Boy. Wow, that's a lot of energy. Produced 21 cubic kilometers of rock, ash, and pumice. Now, here's the thing I wanted to get at. What, guess what happened? The average temperature of the Earth fell by 1.2 degrees Celsius for a year. Because, of course, um, it made some of the most stunning sunsets, I guess, ever. I mean, it was just beautiful. But that ash was reflecting all that light and sending it back up into space, and it made it colder. So people kind of got colder. It didn't return to normal until 1888. So about five years kind of a issue that the world had is that ash essentially settled down into the ground, but it was up in the upper atmosphere for such a long time. I actually have a video clip that kind of explains this, and I think we should pay attention to it because it's pretty cool. It's actually kind of an animated, or not animated is the right word, but a, uh, enacted, reenacted kind of version of what happened in Krakatoa, and this is just a very tiny excerpt. Uh, you can find the full one on YouTube. It's really pretty cool, so if you want to watch that, you might want to do that at your leisure. So let's take a look at this video clip. The eruption had far-reaching effects. 20 million tons of sulfur were released into the atmosphere, causing extraordinary sunsets across the planet and lowering global temperatures well into the 20th century. Of Krakatoa itself, almost nothing remained. 12 square miles of solid rock had disappeared in the space of 48 hours. The volcano had literally blasted itself apart. But in 1927, from 300 meters below the Sunda Straits, it erupted again. As Vabit predicted in his writings, a new volcano formed, growing at a rate of five meters every year. The Indonesians called this volcano Anak Krakatoa 
son of Krakatoa. Today, millions of people live within sight of it. And it's still growing. Wow, hopefully that was pretty cool. I thought it was cool. All right, and the last thing I want to talk about is the formation of mountains. It turns out that when a uh, continental plate collides with a, a continental plate, we know this, what's, that, what's going to happen is they're going to form a mountain range, right? So this is continent one and continent two. And you're going to form a mountain range. But as these uh, rocks collide, they um, use up carbon dioxide, all right? Just the collision of the rocks. Basically, rocks, ro rocks rubbing against the rocks. Then it uses up carbon dioxide. If you use up carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, it will cool the earth. So actually, um, just the process of mountain formation will cool the earth. Interesting thoughts. I didn't know that until I read this. So pretty cool. So that's kind of the last thing. So that kind of ends this. Now, let me give you a preview of our next podcast. In our next podcast, we're going to be talking about um, a pretty controversial issue. Um, and that issue is um, global warming and uh, what causes global warming. Is it occurring? It's a very controversial issue, and we want to discuss that um, in our next podcast. So we'll see you in class. Bye.